Okay, welcome back to the lectures on uh, Laplace transform. And in the last lecture, we have discussed various properties of Laplace transform. And today, we will continue with first uh, with the inverse Laplace transform, and then we will evaluate Laplace transform of uh, various special functions that appear in application. Okay, so we first uh, define this inverse Laplace transform. inverse Laplace transform. So, if the Laplace of f t is f s, then the inverse Laplace transform is defined as the Laplace inverse of f s as f t. Okay, now, the natural question arises that is the Laplace transform unique or the inverse Laplace transform is, is unique. So, to answer this first let, let me consider a function g t which is defined as follows it is 1 at t is equal to 1 and the value is sin t otherwise. So, at all other point it is sin t and at t is equal to 1 the value of this function is 1. Now, in this case what will be the, the Laplace transform of g t and this is again if we integrate 0 to infinity minus s t sin t d t. So, this 1 will not influence that integral. So, we will get simply this s square plus 1 which is the Laplace transform of sin t. So, what we see from here that if a function differ at finitely many points, then the Laplace transform of uh, those functions are the same. But we have a uh, the uniqueness in the sense that corresponding to this uh, sin t, this is the continuous function. So, the Laplace of this sin t we have 1 over s square plus 1. So, we cannot have any other continuous function of which the Laplace transform is 1 over s square plus 1. So, we have uniqueness of this Laplace transform. Uh, up to this continuity if we assume and this is the result also called a latch theorem. So, that theorem says that if f and g are continuous and of exponential order and if the Laplace of f is equal to the Laplace of g t for all s greater than s naught, then we have f t is equal to g t, then they are the same function for all t greater than 0. So, with this we can always have that if we want to get the Laplace inverse of omega over uh, s square plus omega square, then we can simply write sin omega t, because this is the only continuous function which has this Laplace transform. And if we want to have the Laplace transform of s over s square plus omega square, we can simply write its cos omega t, because we know that Laplace of cos omega t is s over s square plus omega square. Now, this inverse Laplace transform very similar to the Laplace transform we have all those properties like linearity. So, this linearity property says that the Laplace of a 1 and f 1 s some function or the Laplace of the f 1 t function let us assume is f 1 s 
and the Laplace of f 2 uh, t function is f 2 s and then this is a 1 and the Laplace inverse of f 1 s. So, this is f t we can also write and the Laplace inverse of f 2 s. So, this we can write f 2 t this we can also write f 1 t. So, this is the same result what we had for the Laplace uh, transform because the Laplace of if we take this to the right side this is Laplace of a 1 f 1 t plus a 2 f 2 t and that is just uh, due to the linearity we have a 1 Laplace of uh, f 1 plus a 2 Laplace of f 2 t. So, it is the same result what we uh, had in Laplace transform. So, like the other properties uh, we have first shifting property we will not uh, discuss all of them again because they are uh, the same basically like here we see now shifting property. So, what this property says that if the Laplace inverse of f s is f t. So, there we had Laplace of f t is f s and then the Laplace inverse of f s minus a is e a t f t. So, this theorem was that the Laplace of e a t f t is f s minus a. So, it is the same theory, same result. So, we have all other properties holds here in case of the inverse transform what we had for the Laplace transform. So, let us just go for the one example. So, Laplace of 1 over s plus 1 whole square with this property. So, we have Laplace of 1 over s minus minus 1 we can write of a square and this result says that e power minus uh, t. So, a t and the Laplace inverse of 1 over s square and the Laplace inverse of 1 over s square is t because Laplace of t was 1 over s square. So, we have t e power minus t. Now, I should just mention uh, one point that the effective method for uh, finding a inverse Laplace transform is to construct uh, a table for the Laplace transform and then use this table to get the inverse Laplace transform. Okay, so, we go for the uh, special functions uh, to get this Laplace transform of the special function the example 1. Uh, we have the Laplace of error function of square root t. So, this error function appears in probability statistics also in PDs and, and various other branches of engineering and science. So, what we have the, Lapla, uh, the error function of square root t it is defined as follows it is 2 over square root pi this factor and integral 0 to uh, square root t. So, we have here square root t then this integral will go from 0 to square root t and e minus x square d x yeah, this is the definition of uh, error function. Now, if you want to take the Laplace transform of this error function, so we apply the definition 2 over square root pi factor will come from here. We have 0 to infinity and this function 0 to square root t e minus s t from the Laplace this kernel e minus x square and d x d t. Now, we need to change the order of integration. So, changing the order of integration. So, what we have basically this is if we have t this is x then we have something like this it is x is square root t is the limit for x this is for the t. So, t is from 0 to infinity and the x was 0 to, to this is square root t. So, in fact, this will go like this. So, now we want to have this change of order of this integration that means, now we want here d t d x. 
So now let's fix the limit for the x now. So it will go for for zero to to infinity. And now for the t limits, so we have this point to infinity. So the upper is infinity, and from this curve to infinity, we have for the t it's x square. So the limits goes from x square to infinity for the t, and we have e power minus s t and e minus x square. So now we can integrate this e power minus s t the inner integral. So zero to infinity e minus x square we take as it is, and e minus s t will be e minus s t or minus s. And as this t approaches to infinity, this will be zero. So we have the minus minus plus, and t uh, is now x square. So what we will get e minus s x square over s and dx. So what we have, this is equal to two over square root pi. We have one over s. We have zero to infinity. And we have e power minus x square is common, and then we have one plus s and x square and dx. So now we take this uh, to make the perfect square here. So we substitute now that one plus s square root with x is a new variable u, so that we have dx is one over one plus s and du. So, in that case now the error function of a square root t is 2 over a square root pi, we have 1 over s, we have also 1 over a square root 1 plus s, we have the limits a 0 to infinity they will not change. So, e power minus u square and dx is du, this factor is already there. Now, this integral it is a well known uh, Gaussian integral and if the limits are minus infinity to plus infinity the value is uh, square root pi, but here we have in the half range 0 to infinity. So, the value of this integral is square root pi uh, by 2. So, this square root pi uh, by 2 will uh, be cancelled with this. So, what we will get 1 over s and square root 1 plus s this is the Laplace transform of error function of t. Now, we go for a, 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 a important example which will be used uh, in, in, in uh, while solving the ordinary and partial differential equations. So, this is Laplace transform again uh, of the error function, but with a different form different argument here. So, k over a square root t. So, this is slightly more involved. So, let us just go through with this the Laplace transform of the error function of k over a square root t 0 infinity we have e minus s t and 2 over this uh, square root pi will come from the Laplace or from this error function and we have 0 to the definition says 0 to this uh, its argument. So, here k over square root t and e minus u square and du. So, this is the error function here k over square root t and then we have a uh, dt. So, now again we change the order of integration and in this case we have something u is equal to this k over square root t curve and we have uh, u this side and t let us say this side. So, the t is 0 to infinity and for the u we had a 0 to this curve. Now, if we change the order of integration and we want to have d t d u. So, for the u now 0 to infinity and for the t we will go from here to this curve so that means k over u is square. So, from 0 to k uh, over 
uh, k square uh, it is a square root t k over u whole square. So, k square over u square e minus s t and we have e minus u square and d t d u and this factor 2 over pi 2 over square root pi 2 over square root pi will come out of the integral. So, what we have then it is 2 over square root pi and 0 to infinity e power minus u square. So, we have the integral of this 1 over s a minus sign will come we can accommodate with this limits. So, while putting the 0 first. So, we have 1 and minus e minus s k square over u square and we have d u. So, what we have 2 over square root pi 1 over s we can take again out of this integral 0 to infinity we have and e minus u square minus e minus u square minus s k square over u square and d u. This integral the first one we know the value so we can get it easily, but for the second one we need to evaluate. So, let us assume that this is i s this integral is 0 to infinity and e minus u square minus s k square over u square d u. So, here the trick is that we differentiate this d i s over d s. So, differentiation under the integral sign will help to get this integral value. So, with respect to s, so this is again e minus u square minus s k square u square and with respect to s, so we will get minus k square u square and then we have d u. So, now to simplify this we let that is square root s k over u. So, here we want to make a square and we assume that this is x that means we have minus square root s k over u square d u is d x differentiate uh, d x. So, we have this and now this d i over d s will be so we have uh, the limits. 0 to infinity and uh, we have e power minus u square. So, u square will be s k square over x square. So, s k square over x square and minus this one. So, this is again uh, x square and now we have minus k square over u square already there. Then we have u square from here that is square root s k with minus with minus from this. So, d x d x and u square over square root s k. So, this u square u square gets cancelled and this k also. So, we have k over square root s k over square root s and just wait a minute. So, here we have minus k square over u square and so what we get 0 to infinity e minus s k square over x square minus x square d x. So, minus minus will be so d i over d s we have with the minus sign here and then if we take this we get 1 minus at this point. So, we have 0 to infinity when the limits comes we have for when u is 0 we get the infinity limit. So, we change the limit here and put one minus sign will come. So, we have minus k over square root s 0 to infinity this d x and now note that this is again 
i s we have the same form uh, the only change is that u is changed now to x so we have again here the i s so we get this differential equation which can be solved d i over d s is equal to minus k over square root s i and this will give us the ln i is equal to minus 2 k the integral of this minus 2 k uh, square root s and plus this ln c. So, i will be c e minus 2 k square root s Okay. So, now we can get this constant also because we know that i 0 is. So, our i was here. So, if s 0 then we have 0 to infinity power minus u square d u and that is the Gaussian integral. So, we have 0 to infinity e minus u square d u and this is square root pi over 2. So, with this condition we get the c square root pi over 2 and this implies now this our i s is square root pi over 2 and e minus 2 k square root s. So, then the Laplace transform of the error function of k over square root t will be 2 over s square root pi and square root pi over 2 minus square root pi over 2 e minus 2 k square root s. So, we had here. So, this was the error function and we have 2 over square root pi sitting there 1 over s and the integral value 0 to infinity power minus u square d u will be square root pi over 2 and minus this integral we have evaluated. So, square root pi over 2 and e minus 2 k square root s. So, we simplify this. So, square root pi by 2 we take out. So, to get this uh, Laplace of uh, error function of k over square root t will be so, this square root pi over 2. So, we have 1 over s only here. So, we have 1 minus e minus 2 k uh, square root s and over s. So, this is the Laplace transform of this function. So, now we come to the next function that is the delta epsilon function we call it. So, Laplace of the function of the function delta epsilon t minus a. So, this is defined as follows that the value is 0 if t is less than a, the value is 1 over epsilon if, uh, if t is between a and a plus epsilon and this is 0 if t is greater than a plus epsilon. So, what we see now the function is is, uh, is 0 outside this a and a plus epsilon and in this range a to a plus epsilon the value is 1 over epsilon. So, if you integrate this so what we will get this area is always 1. So, if we integrate this in any range from minus infinity to plus infinity or 0 to infinity delta epsilon t minus a d t this will be just 1. This is the property of this function and if you want to get the Laplace of this function this is 0 to infinity minus s t delta epsilon t minus a d t. So, this is a to a plus epsilon e minus s t and we have this a to a plus epsilon this is defined as 1 over epsilon d t. So, here minus 1 over this will be 1 over s with minus sign. 
so s epsilon and then e per minus s t t will be replaced by a plus epsilon and the minus this lower limit so e minus s a so this we take common e minus s a over s epsilon and this minus we accommodate there so we have 1 minus e minus s epsilon so this is the laplace transform of delta epsilon t minus a and we have defined this function delta epsilon function to go to the dirac delta function which is uh, which has lots of applications in physics or unit impulse function so dirac delta function or it is also called unit uh, impulse function it is denoted by delta t minus a and it can be thought basically as the limiting case limiting case of delta epsilon t minus a as epsilon approaches to 0. So, we define this delta t minus a as limit epsilon to 0 and delta epsilon t minus a. So, just remember that this delta epsilon function is defined between a and a epsilon the height here is is 1 over epsilon and the area here this integral over this is always 1. So, integral 0 to infinity delta epsilon t minus a d t is always 1. So, if we take this epsilon to a what will happen because this peak we will get a peak here because 1 over epsilon will will go to infinity in that case. So, this uh, unit impulse function or this Dirac delta function one can uh, think as this limiting case of, of this uh, delta epsilon function and uh, it has the uh, following properties which can be derived with this definition itself. So, the Dirac delta function delta t minus a is defined as having the following properties following properties. So, the first property here is that delta t minus a is 0 for all t as long as t is not is equal to a and if we integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity delta t minus a d t it is directly coming from this property. So, in this case we have the it is 1. So, we can also take any other uh, range here of the integration as long as this a is, uh, is uh, in the range of this integration then the value is, is 1. And one more important property is minus infinity to plus infinity and this f t and delta t minus a d t. So, if, if any uh, continuous function is, is sitting here then this value would be simply f at this a again as long as this a is in the range of integration. So, with this property we go with the Laplace transform of Dirac delta function. Now, it is simple because we, we know the nice property of the Laplace transform. So, we have 0 to infinity per minus s t of this uh, delta function. So, we have delta t minus a d t and in this case uh, this will be evaluated at this a simply. So, we have e minus a s this is the Laplace transform in a particular case in a particular case we have the Laplace transform of delta t 
if we put a to 0 it is 1. So, Laplace inverse of 1 is delta t and this uh, Laplace transform we can also calculate directly from the Laplace transform of that uh, delta epsilon function by taking the limit as epsilon approaches to 0. So, now we go for the Laplace transform of Bessel function. Laplace transform of Bessel's function So, let me just uh, introduce first briefly what is the Bessel function. So, Bessel's function of order n or of first kind is defined as j and t is the sum or is 0 to infinity with r. So, r 0 to infinity minus 1 r t over 2 n plus 2 r and 1 over factorial r and gamma n plus r plus 1. This is the definition and what exactly it is actually. So, it is a solution of the Bessel equation the Basel, Basel's equation of order n y double prime 1 over t y prime plus 1 minus n square over t square y is equal to 0. So, we will come to this point again while discussing the application of this Laplace transform for solving differential equation and we will uh, come to the special equation we will see this uh, solution as a as a special function. So, here of our interest are two functions of order 0 and 1. So, the Bessel's functions of order 0 and 1 are given as. So, open this uh, sum here for n 0 and 1. So, we will get j 0 t is 1 minus t square over 2 square plus t 4 2 square 4 square minus t 6 over 2 square 4 square and 6 square and the j 1 t is t over 2 minus t q over 2 square 4 plus t 5 2 square 4 square and 6 and so on. And it is interesting to see that if we take the derivative of this j 0 function you will get 0 you will get minus 2 t over 2 square that means t over 2 here we will get again the 4 times the t q and this 4 will be cancelled. So, we have 2 square 4 and so on. So, the derivative of this j 0 function is minus j 1 t. So, if we know the, the Laplace transform of 1 we can get the Laplace transform of the other one. So, as an example we take that the uh, find the Laplace transform of j 0 t find Laplace transform of j 0 t and j 1 t. So, Laplace transform of j 0 t we have the Laplace transform of 1 minus t square over 2 square plus t 4 2 square 4 square minus t 6 over 2 square 4 square 6 square and so on. So, we can take this Laplace term 
by term as long as the for uh, this series is convergent and the series take after taking the Laplace uh, is convergent and we will see in this case that series is convergent. So, it is uh, safe to to take this Laplace term by term in the case of the series. So, we have Laplace of 1 is 1 over s then we have minus 1 over 2 is square Laplace of this uh, t square is factorial 2 over s cube and so on. So, 2 is square 4 is square then we have factorial 4 over s 5 and we have 1 over 2 is square 4 is square and 6 is square we have factorial 6 over s 7 and then we simplify this to get 1 over s 1 minus half we will get 1 over s square then the next term will be 3 over 1 uh, over 2 3 over 4 1 over s 4 and because 1 over s we have taken this common. So, minus 1 over 2 3 over 4 5 over 6 and we have 1 over s 6 and so on and this is with the binomial series we can write this sum as 1 over s 1 plus 1 over s square and minus half or this is s square plus 1 and we have minus 1 there. So, we get 1 over s we have s square plus 1 over over s square minus half. So, this will be cancelled with this and then we get 1 over a square root 1 plus s square. This is the Laplace transform of j 1 t of order 1 of order 0 sorry j 0 t. Now, if we want to get the Laplace of j 1 t this is minus the Laplace of j uh, derivative of this j with respect to t. So, minus now we apply the uh, the derivative theorem here. So, s the Laplace transform of j 0 t and minus j 0 0. So, this j 0 0 if we uh, put in the in the series here t 0. So, this j 0 0 is 1. So, this is here 1. So, we have this 1 minus minus plus we have 1 minus s over and is square root s is square plus 1 this is the Laplace transform of j 1 t. Okay, now, we come to the uh, another important uh, uh, part of this lecture and that is the convolution and that will be very useful to get uh, the solution of the integral uh, or integral differential equation or integral equations where uh, these such a convolution appear. So, let me define what is actually the convolution. So, convolution the convolution of 2 given functions f t and g t is written as f convolution g this is the notation for the convolution and is defined as or defined by the integral f this is star g the convolution and this is 0 to t. So, if we have this t here 0 to t f integrating variable f tau and g t minus tau d tau. So, this is the convolution integral now, it has some nice properties like the f star g is, is g star f. So, the convolution is symmetric. So, this is the symmetric property and easy to, to see if we take this f star g. So, it is 0 to t f tau g 
t minus tau d tau and if we substitute here this t minus tau to u will get d tau is d u and then this f star g will be with minus and this t because when 0 uh, this tau is 0 we have u t and t then with 0 and f this tau is t minus u and we have g u and this d tau is, is d u and this is 0 to t f t minus u g u d u and this is exactly by the definition g convolution f. So, similarly, we have the other properties of this uh, convolution like if we have a constant if we multiply to the convolution or we multiply this constant to f and then take the convolution with g or f and multiply c to this g it is the same for any constant. So, c is a constant or if we have f is convolution with g star h it is associative property. So, we can also have the convolution first with f and g and then the convolution with h. So, this is the associative property and finally, the distributive property that f convolution with, with g plus h is equal to the f convolution with g and plus this f convolution with h. So, we have this distributive property. Now, we go to the important theorem and that is the convolution theorem. for the Laplace. So, if this f and g are piecewise continuous on 0 infinity and of exponential order alpha, then we have the Laplace very nice result of this convolution f is Laplace of the convolution of f and g is simply the Laplace of f t multiplied by the Laplace of g t. So, a very important theorem that the Laplace of the, uh, the convolution is just the Laplace of f multiplied by Laplace of g. So, we take this proof now go for the proof and we take the Laplace of the f convolution g by the definition we have 0 to infinity e minus s t and this convolution integral 0 to t sorry 0 to t f tau g t minus tau and d tau and d t. So, this is the convolution integral here. So, we change the order of integration to simplify this changing the order of integration. So, we have this t and tau the t is from 0 to infinity and this tau is from 0 to t. So, we have 0 to t. Now, if we change this order of integration, so we want to have first t and then tau. So, the tau now will be 0 to infinity and for t from this to infinity. So, this is uh, exactly now tau to infinity and we have e minus s t and f uh, tau g t minus tau and d t d tau. So, if we substitute 
this t minus tau to u, you will get d t is equal to d u. So, this Laplace of this f star g t will be 0 to infinity and now this t uh, tau. So, u will be 0 and infinity. So, u will be also infinity here. So, e minus s t is u plus tau. We have f tau and g u and d t is d u and then we have d tau. Now, we have 0 to infinity for the tau we have e minus s tau and this f tau the inner integral 0 to infinity e minus s u and g u d u and then we have d tau. So, if we just see that this is the Laplace transform of g. So, this is the Laplace transform of g and the remaining part in the integral e power minus s tau f tau d tau is the Laplace transform of f. So, here we get this Laplace of uh, f star g is the Laplace of f multiplied by Laplace of g this theorem. Now, we just look at a few examples where we can uh, directly apply this Laplace or convolution theorem while getting the inverse Laplace transform for example, that the Laplace transform of s over s square plus 1 whole square I want to get. Then note that the Laplace of the sin t we know that this is 1 over s square plus 1 and we also know that the Laplace of the cos t is s over s square plus 1 s over s square plus 1. So, by the convolution theorem using convolution theorem what we see that the Laplace of the convolution of sin t and and cos t would be Laplace of sin t the product and the Laplace of cos t. So, Laplace of sin t is 1 over s square plus 1 and Laplace of cos t is s over s square plus 1 that means s over s square plus 1 whole square and this is the function we want to get the inverse. So, this implies simply that the L inverse of s over s square plus 1 whole square is the convolution of a sin t and cos t which is given by the integral 0 to t and sin tau and cos t minus tau d tau. So, here we simplify now it is a sin a cos b. So, we multiply by 2 and divide by half. So, we have 2 sin a, a cos b. So, this will be the Laplace inverse of s over s square plus 1 whole square is half 0 to t and 2 sin a cos b sin uh, a plus b. So, sin t plus sin a minus b. So, we get 2 tau minus t and then we have d tau. So, we integrate this so, sin t is, is independent of this tau. So, we take this sin t and here the integral will give us t plus we have sin 2 tau minus t and this will be the half here we have with minus cos 2 tau minus t 
and divide by this 2 0 t. So, we have half t sin t and we have minus 1 over 4 when we put this t we have cos t and minus when we put uh, this tau 0 we have cos minus t and that is cos t itself. So, this is uh, simply half t sin t and this is the Laplace inverse of s over s square plus 1 whole square. So, with the help of this convolution we have uh, got the Laplace inverse of this s over s square plus 1 whole square. So, if we see that this is the product of the of the Lap of the Laplace transform of, of two um, functions. So, Laplace product of the Laplace transform then we can apply simply this convolution theorem to get the uh, inverse Laplace transform. So, for example, in this. So, if we have find the Laplace inverse of 1 over square root s and s minus 1. Then we know that the Laplace of 1 over square root t is gamma uh, it is minus uh, minus half plus 1. So, gamma half and s half. So, square root s and therefore, we get this Laplace inverse of 1 over square root s is 1 over this is square root pi 1 over square root pi and 1 over square root t. So, this one function which can see uh, which we can see 1 over square root s the Laplace inverse is 1 over square root pi and 1 over square root t. Now, the other one 1 over s minus 1 so product of two functions 1 over square root s and 1 over s minus 1 both are familiar now to us. So, because the Laplace inverse of 1 over square root s is 1 over square root pi 1 over square root t and the other one is simple. So, we have 1 over s minus 1 and this is the Laplace transform of, of e uh, power t. So, the inverse is e t and then by the convolution theorem then by the convolution theorem. So, the Laplace inverse of this product s and s minus 1 we can get. So, 1 over square root pi is, is and 1 over square root t that is one function and the convolution with the Laplace inverse of the other one. So, that is uh, the simple case we can have. So, this is equal to 1 over square root pi and the convolution integral 0 to t and we have 1 over square root t and e uh, or 1 over square root tau now new variable we introduce here. So, tau because the convolution we are writing. So, 1 over tau and e t minus tau. So, f uh, t minus tau and d tau. So, now e uh, power t it is a constant again we can take out of this integral. So, we get now the Laplace inverse of 1 over square root s and s minus 1 is equal to 1 over or e e power t over square root pi. So, e power t we get from here square root pi is, is there already then we have 0 to t e minus tau over square root tau d tau. Now, if we substitute that u is square root tau or that means this d u is 1 over 2 square root tau d tau then what we get in this case this Laplace inverse will be uh, 
e t over a square root pi I will remain as it is this constant factor and then we have uh, this 1 over square root t d tau is d u. So, it is 0 to now. So, u this tau is, is 0 then u is also 0, but this tau is t then u will be square root t square root t and we have e minus this tau is u square. So, we have u square and then this d tau over square root tau is d u and over 2. So, we have uh, no d uh, 2 will be multiplied here to d u because 1 over square root. So, this implies 1 over square root tau d tau is 2 d u. So, this will be replaced by 2 d u. So, 2 comes here and then we have d u and this is the familiar function we have uh, now e o e t and 2 over square root pi 0 to square root t e minus u square d u and this is the error function of a square root t we have uh, introduced today itself. So, the Laplace inverse of 1 over square root s and s minus 1 will be e t and error function of this is square root t. So, this is the Laplace inverse of of 1 over square root s s minus 1. So, in this way we can use this convolution theorem to get the Laplace inverse of of the product of the functions here and that will be simply the convolution. So, here we uh, conclude this lecture. So, today we have uh, evaluated uh, this Laplace transform of, of some special functions like this error function, uh, Bessel function and also this Dirac delta function and we shall uh, encounter some of these functions uh, while solving differential equations. And so, next lecture will be devoted to solving uh, ordinary differential equations and integral equations. So, that is all for today. Uh, thank you. Goodbye.